Did you know that in as little as five minutes, your entire house can be engulfed in flames just from a small candle fire? If you didn't, you do now. Hey guys, I'm Dozer at Dozer Rescue. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about fire safety here at the house. So if you're ready, let's get right into it. According to an article found on The Zebra, published this year, we found that every 87 seconds across the US, a fire was occurring at home. This also led to over 2,000 deaths and over 11,000 injuries sustained from fire-related incidents at home. So to prevent these statistics from going up, I'm here to show you guys some tips and tricks at home so that you can keep you and your loved ones safe. We're trying to prevent loss of life, injuries, and property damage. Quick disclaimer for you guys, all this information that I'm providing to you in this video is for educational purposes only. So the first thing that we're gonna do creating our fire safety plan is we want a fire exit strategy. Now this is gonna consist of having two possible exits in every single room of the house. You wanna make sure that every single family member knows where these exits are and how to access these exits. So these exits can be something as simple as a door or they can be a window leading to the outside. If you have little ones, you also wanna consider and make sure that they have a ladder or a step stool uh, to access windows if they're a little higher up. You also wanna consider if you're on a second story that you have an escape ladder or some kind of means to exit that second story so you're not falling and injuring yourself. The next point that I wanna make is we need a designated uh, rendezvous or meeting point. So we wanna make sure that we're using a parking lot or a nearby park, just somewhere nearby where after the fire is over and everyone has escaped from the house, they all know that they're gonna meet at this designated spot. That way you guys can meet back up, call 911, and see if anyone is needing medical attention. So those are the first two things we're gonna cover. We wanna cover our two possible exits in every single room of the household, and we're gonna cover our meeting point. Where are we all meeting after the fire is over? Some additional tips when it comes to your fire exit strategy is you wanna make sure that you keep all exits unobstructed. So that means if you have windows, you don't want a bunch of clutter and things near those windows. You need to make sure that those windows are able to open and that you can exit out of those windows. Same thing with doors. You may have multiple doors in a room and you wanna make sure that all those doors open so that if a fire does occur, you can escape through every single door. The other thing is I mentioned earlier about children. If you have small children or children with disabilities, you need to help them make sure that they're able to, ac to access every single exit. So if that is a window, you may have windows that are higher up. You need to teach them or provide them the tools that they need to be able to get to that window and to get themselves out. So now let's discuss how to avoid starting fires in the first place when you're at home. So some of the most common reasons why fires start at home is you have cooking, you have uh, heating, you have electrical, smoking, and you have candles. Those are some of the biggest reasons why fires start. So let's talk about each one of those, break it down, and kind of go over what to do and what not to do. So the first one is kind of no brainer when it comes to cooking. When you're cooking, you wanna make sure that you're not leaving your cooking unattended. Stay with your stove, stay with your oven, and cook until you're finished. Don't leave it unattended while you're letting something cook because that's how fires occur very often. So. It may sound like it's not a big deal, you can go leave and come back, but please stay with your cooking and don't leave flammable objects near an open stove or something like that either. Just make sure that you're keeping flammable objects away and make sure that you're staying in the kitchen while you're doing your cooking. The next thing we're gonna talk about is heating, right? So this is things like water heaters or if you have heating, uh, little office heaters, desk heaters, things like that. Make sure that you're checking your equipment and that there's nothing that could be burned inside of those heating elements. So if you have um, like newspapers laying around and they're sitting right in front of like a desk heater, obviously over time that newspaper can get hot and start a fire. And again, we're talking about the five most common things because these things occur frequently and they start the fires. They may sound like it could never happen to you, but these things statistically are showing that they do occur. So if you're using heaters, make sure that you're staying clear of flammable objects near those heaters. Uh, for things like water heaters, make sure that you don't have anything touching or near the heating elements. Um, that way they don't cause fire and burn down the rest of the house. The next thing is electrical. So this one is very, very common, especially as we progress and become more and more modern. 
Uh, we all use technology and we're constantly having to plug in devices into our outlets to receive electricity. So in order to prevent electrical fires from occurring, uh, make sure that you're not daisy chaining and you're not overloading your circuits, overloading your power supply. So that means don't use uh, extension cords and keep plugging them in some more extension cords to plug them in some more devices and just you don't want to keep combining devices um, when it, in terms of plugging them into each other. So with electrical, please do not daisy chain and don't overload. Just use your standard plugs and outlets and just go from there. The next thing we have is smoking. This is a big one. A lot of people surprisingly smoke in their households. And when you're smoking, you have ash, hot things, and that tends to cause fires. So please do not smoke inside your house. Go outside to a designated smoking area and smoke there. And when you're done with your cigarette or your cigar, your pipe, whatever you're smoking, please make sure that you're putting water on your ash or spit or something. Give it some, give it some kind of liquid. Uh, not gasoline or just just do water um, or put it out appropriately and don't just put it in like a trash can where there's paper and things like that you don't want to cause fires so just be cognizant of what you're smoking and what you do afterwards uh, with your cigarette butts or, or cigar roaches and things like that and then finally we have candles right candles are great they smell good I like candles but we need to make sure that we're using our candles safe one of the biggest issues we've had is when people leave candles on overnight, they go to sleep with them because they're relaxing and they help kind of get you to sleep. But if uh, something happens, wind knocks it over, if you have pets, cats come jumping around, there's a variety of things that can happen um, and those candles can knock over, light things on fire and your whole house is up in flames within five minutes. So do yourself a favor. If you're gonna have candles on, make sure that you're monitoring your candles. And if you're going to sleep, please make sure that you blow your candles out or the better thing is just use battery operated candles. There are battery operated candles that look just as nice as a real candle. They actually produce scents and you don't have to have to worry about anything catching on fire. So those are the most common issues with house fires. And those are some tips on how to prevent house fires to keep you and your family safe. So now we've created our fire exit strategy. We've talked about what to do and how to prevent fires in the house. Now, what are we gonna do if there's an actual fire in the house? So the first thing is, let's practice that strategy that we've been planning and, and preparing this whole time. So make sure that all your family members know how to exit and let's get everybody out of the house as fast as possible. Once they're all out of the house, get to your meeting point, immediately call 911 and let them know what's going on. Let them know your address and how many people you're with and if there's anyone who's injured from the fire. That's in the best case scenario. That's what you're gonna do. But if that isn't the case, we need to go to our next step. So let's say we're stuck in the house, we can't get out, and the fire's in the house and it's going at a rapid pace. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna close all the doors that are available to us or nearby. Now the reason why we're gonna close all the doors is we're actually buying ourselves time. The fire is spreading, but by closing the door, you're providing uh, just a little bit more time from that fire uh, from reaching your room. It'll hit the closed door and it'll eventually burn up the closed door, uh, but you're intending that fire to stop spreading right there. So it will buy you some time, but it will not save you. So I'm just gonna put that out there. Um, if you're trapped and there's absolutely no way out or you don't have a means to, maybe let's just say you're injured, close the doors and seek help as fast as you possibly can. Open up your windows, call for help, scream for help, get on the phone, call 911, call whoever is nearby, try to figure out another solution to get out of that house. You can do things like, uh, you can, if you have bed sheets, throw some bed sheets out there. You can use it to either break your fall, try to land on something else if it's out of a window. Um, if you're on a one story and there's no windows and there's no doors, you know, you gotta do the best you can. But again, you wanna try to stay calm, try to relax, close any doors that are near you and stay low to the ground. Stay low and breathe uh, the air that's down at the ground because smoke rises from fires. So if smoke comes up, um, it's gonna go towards the ceiling or whatever is highest. And so you wanna stay as low as possible, cover your nose. If you, if you have a shirt or something, cover it over your head. Try not to breathe in the smoke. 
because once you pass out, it's game over. So stay low to the ground, call for help as fast and as early on as possible, and uh, just stay low. Hopefully firefighters can get to you or you can find a way out of your house. But if a fire occurs and worst case scenario, you, you can't get out due to your, your plan that you've practiced, that's what you're gonna do next. Close your doors, stay low, make sure that you call 911 as soon as possible. Um, or if you have someone else near you, call, have them call 911 while you're closing the doors and staying low to the ground. And that's the best thing that you can do at that situation. To kind of give you guys a recap, we want to make sure that we're creating a fire strategy or a fire exit plan. So go sit down with your family, talk about it, and create a plan on how you guys are going to exit your house in case a fire does occur. Remember to include multiple scenarios and talk about a variety of ways to get out, not just one way. Make sure you guys practice, 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 practice. Don't just create a really nice strategy. Make sure that you guys are implementing it and practicing it at the very least annually. Every single year, go over it with your family and actually do a rundown, a physically, a physical rundown going through and actually escaping, getting to your meeting point, calling 911 and going from there. And then fire prevention. Let's not cause fires in the first place. Check your cooking, stay with your, if you stay in the kitchen if you're cooking, make sure that you're not daisy chaining electrical items, check your space heaters, your water heaters, make sure that you're not smoking indoors, don't leave candles on while you're sleeping, things like that. If you want to see more of my fire experience and what it was like for me when I went through my California Fire Academy, go ahead and click this video here to see what it was like when I went through. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope these tips and tricks help prepare and keep you and your family safe. Stay safe, stay prepared, and stay tactical. I'll see you guys in the next video. God bless.